Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the implications of a per unit tax on suppliers. With that said, let's get into it. So to begin, let's take a look at a general supply and demand graph. So we have our axes, our actual curves, and then a fully labeled graph where we have price on the y-axis, quantity on the x-axis, supply is the upward sloping blue line and demand is the downward sloping red line. And of course, you can see my equilibrium is labeled P star and Q star. Now, if a tax is imposed on the supplier, a per unit tax is going to increase the cost to the supplier. And an increase in cost is a shift factor for the supply curve. Increase in cost will shift the supply curve to the left. Now that I have two supply curves, I don't want you to confuse one of them. So I'm gonna turn the new supply curve green and I'm gonna call it the supply after tax. So you'll see that it's actually less than the supply before the tax and that's because the cost of whatever the good they're producing has increased. If the costs increase, profits go down, supply curve shifts left. But now you'll see I have a new equilibrium I'm gonna denote it up here at P star and Q tax. This is the quantity that will get traded when the tax is imposed. Now this P star can also be written as PC. This is the price that the consumers are going to pay for the product, but it's not the same as the price that the firms are going to receive. The price that the firms are going to receive for the product is actually down here. And I'm gonna denote this as price that the consumers pay minus the tax that the government is going to take from the producers and that's gonna be denoted as PF. So you can see that the price consumers pay is higher than the price the firms receive. And the distance in between the middle of PC and PF is just the amount of tax. Well, that leaves us with a rectangle right here, and this is actually tax revenue. And that's because just as I said, the distance between PC and PF is your tax, and the tax is per unit. So we would multiply the tax by the amount of quantity being traded, and so that can be represented in this rectangle. Now you'll notice that Q tax is strictly less than our original equilibrium Q value, which was right here at Q star. And so that gives us a little triangle in the middle. And as you might've guessed, that's actually our dead weight loss because there's inefficiencies when we're out of our original equilibrium, when this shift to the supply after tax curve happened. So this dead weight loss right here occurs because Q tax is strictly less than Q star or our original equilibrium. This is a simple explanation just introducing you to what this graphical representation looks like. However, if you want to see this exact example with real values, absolutely let us know in the comments and I can make that video for you so that you can see what this looks like with numbers instead of just with Q star, P star, PC, and so on. We hope that you found this video helpful, and if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comments section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.